Stable chat today from Charlton. I've been doing a few things here, but I'm catching up with Charlton President Joe Thompson. Hello again, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, thanks for welcoming me in for the, what, second, third, fourth time? How many times is this? Been? It's a pity that Andrea is not actually uh, here for this one. We had a complete false start. Someone may have hit the, uh, forgot to hit the record button on the, uh, the initial one. I've been here today um, catching up with some stable chats around the guys and also doing an interview with um, the Sandersons, um, the achievements they've been able to achieve with their kids. That'll be aired on Sunday um, coming, uh, Naomi and Shane, and I encourage people to have a bit of a watch about it because I think it's a great job what they've been able to do, uh, uprooting, I suppose, and coming here to this Charlton community. Yeah, most definitely, Paul. They've, um, look, they come from... Uh Western Sydney to here, we encouraged them to come. Um, it was actually through when uh, Ryan had a, you know, a really horrific fall here and ended up in the uh, Alfred Hospital. And through that, I got to know Shane over the phone. He's thinking about relocating. I said, well, the only spot that comes here. And uh, he came and had a couple of looks and he did. And they've uh, fully embraced being here. The, um, the, you know, the kids, or well, they're not kids, they're young adults. Um, have done really well, uh, become part of the community. Um, Abby's done what she's in VCE this year. You know, she um, plays netball. She's uh, also coached the under-17s, I think, and because she likes being in charge, I'll just put that in. Um, and, no, and they've done really well. And, they've, look, they're great ambassadors for us as both as a town and a club. We're, we're wrapped. Actually, when she uh, drove the double, um, when the, the kids won five races for the day, which was half what's spurred me onto this interview. It was one of the things she said, I said about, you know, we would be parting, no, I've got to play netball the next day. She didn't say about coaching as well. So yeah. that's a great commitment from, from them to buy into the community um, from, you know, I would imagine from you guys' point of view. Oh, most definitely. And that's that's part of being in the small community. A um, bit like the Markhams, the, uh, which, you know, I know you've interviewed today as well. You know, Ash come across with Tamar and four kids and um, both AJ and, and Chase are both playing footy here and they've both got a job in the town and, you know, they've, um, they've embraced, embraced being in the town, being in the community. You won't be short of rucks, I wouldn't imagine, for a little while. No, shouldn't be, should be. They're good tall boys. <laughs> and strong fellas carry a bag of wheat, no worries, on, the, on their shoulders. Denby um, and Mick, they're, they're probably not having a great run at the minute, but um, they, they love it here um, yep. with the interview, which is terrific. And Greg Norman, I mean, he offers so much to, to the community down there. It must be a lot of fun down and around that area from time to time. Oh, yeah, and there's a bit of stirring goes on too. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of one-upmanship. But no, look, they, they all appear to get on very well, uh, which makes going to work, because this can be a tough caper as we all know, but you want to go to work and enjoy where your environment is and, and get the fun out of that and get the fun out of your, your fellow trainers' wins or successes, which I think they do. They fully embrace it and so does the town for them. Did you have a footy com uh, tipping contest down there? Because you've got a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, I don't know whether the Sandersons embraced the AFL and we wouldn't embrace the NRL that well. So, look, no, we stayed away for that for the time being. Yeah, we don't get in an argument with Shane over football. I know that much. That, that is for sure. The training no, centre. Rugby. No, that's rugby. He calls it football. It's rugby. We have football. It's football. I got a, this hat comes from New South Wales. Yeah, it's football. <laughs> um, what was it? The, the training centre. Shane and uh, they've got the new shed um, and the rest. It, it really is starting to change. Big shed inside the training centre center track. You must be wrapped like how that training centre is progressing. Um, one from a horseman's point of view, but also the club president um, here in Charlton. Oh, most definitely. So we put the machinery shed that was, uh, most of our machinery was housed at the actual racetrack. But to be honest, we, we have to maintain our training tracks. So we put it in the middle of our training track, which means there's access because we look after it ourselves. The trainers look after the training track, um, which makes easy access, you know, the water trucks, the conditioner, so forth. So, and the tractor there with the slasher, which you know, allows them to keep the training centre in good nick. Um, so we put that in, and with Shane getting the new training facility, that allowed Ash to come across. Once again, we probably finished that centre about three days before Ash turned up, so the Sanderson's moved down. I think Ash moved him out, helped move him out just so he could move in. I reckon that's what happened. So uh, it's always been a tight timeline because we've been trying to do a lot in a pretty, pretty short timeline when it's all said and done. Yeah, but you're doing a good job and, and, and great for the, the community here as well. And that's the one thing... 
interviews. I remember doing one with Naomi last year, and she said to me she hates going to get the paper sometimes because it can take half an hour to do a five-minute job. But um, Ash said the same thing. The community buy-in from Charlton here, the way they all embrace it, not just the, the harness people. Like I think that's that's pretty important for a small community. Um, Charlton's not a small town as such, but it's not a big town either. Like So it's pretty important, isn't it? Oh, very much so. And... Um as with well, we talked about it earlier, you know, on the other interview. But we had the tipping comp, and um, it sort of made people aware of uh, Trot's vision, you know, the racing and their understanding of it a bit more. Um, it's surprising the amount of people who come to me and say, "Oh, you know, what so and so the other day they went well," or so, they check the results every day. You know, like there's people who wouldn't have even known Trots were on, you know, say five, eight, ten years ago, are checking the results each day because they know where to go now, and you know, on the HRV site and so forth. So, those sort of things. It's basic stuff, but it actually the interest level is, you know, quite good, quite good. It's one of it is one of those things, and we didn't have this in the other interview. It's it's surprising what works sometimes like I find that myself as well and I'm sure you guys are aware we're actually in the shed where, where yourself and Andrea started with the with the iPhone with dodgy reception to say say the least and absolutely no organization but the way your Facebook page has grown and embraced the tipping contest through COVID um, you, you guys I don't know if you're a social media uh, no you're not but I mean you must be wrapped with how it has grown and the you know the engagement people get from all over the countryside with it. Yeah, surprisingly, we thought we were pretty organised too. So when you're saying it wasn't organised, no, it, look, um, it's, there's no way known you thought that was organised. No, we thought we'd just wing it and see how it went. Um, but uh, look, in in any, particularly this cape, you've got to get the fun out of it anyway. It's got to get the fun out. Of it. If we were doing it for the dollars, look, there's many other things we could do to get a quid. There's no doubt in that. But it's great fun if you can get if you can see the fun side of it. Um, and get pe the more people that get involved, obviously that increases the fun. And if they get a bit of an understanding of it, that's great. And yeah, no, it's it's Andrea tells me there's so many looked at it. Or, yeah, I, I said she says about the likes. I, I often wonder how many dislikes are there, but you know, it doesn't matter. I can give you an angry face. Don't worry, I'll get them every now and then. Right, I'm sure we're getting a few too. <laughs> we'll get some today, <laughs> just because they want to. Um, training centre is going terrific. You, you, you track the progression in the last three years um, down there. There was nothing. There was, the track was always great, but your amenities and what you got now. Um, back to harness racing, embracing communities, which I think is where a lot of people get um, our industry wrong. We need to embrace it. Mm. Dual purpose great amenities and keeps growing and keeps changing. You must be wrapped in that as well. Yeah, that's a very much community driven though. Um, so that building that's there, the, the 2020 complex, they, uh, they were 13 years getting that together. The, the um, community put in 1.3 or 1.35, I think it was, into the building. And then we, the, the seven clubs on the um, reserve there took out another 150 grand loan because we were we were struggling to finish it off and we wanted it finished, you know, the um, landscaping and so forth around. And the, our local contractors here done a wonderful job. Like, I think we did the, the landscaping for, let's say, 80000 I remember we had a bit of a look and it would, if we'd done that on a full commercial rate, it would have been 250000 in the canner. So that's a lot of saving. That's, that's community, you know, they're putting their, that's big input. Um, so that's been brilliant. And then of latter times, we've put, you know, the new urinal, um, the two stabling over the covers over it, and the new parade ring has come up terrific. And um, now it's now all hot nicks asphalted in the car park. It looks terrific. It really, and it's a, it's a pretty unique setting over there because it's in the horseshoe bend of the river. It's, it is a beautiful setting in general, but it's now, it's pretty bloody good. But that was very much community driven. As, the harness racing club being part of that, but it was definitely community driven. You know, we're, we're it's been a two way street. We're part of them, and that they've been part of us. That's actually what I mean, though. Like because you don't get community buy in if you don't buy into the community. No. And so you said, oh, there's seven other clubs. Absolutely, it's yeah. great that harness racing is a yeah. part of it. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of towns would like to be a part of something like that. So oh, most definitely, and we've all we've all benefited because of that. You know, all the clubs have benefited. I think harness racing, well, it definitely benefited, you know, because the facilities. Like, you go over there on Monday, sunny day, but it's a pretty cool breeze. It faces, you know, northeast. The breeze has come from the south. It was absolutely gorgeous over there on Monday. And so all our older people in the community, which are probably the ones that can come on a, you know, a work day, they're all there having a hell of a day, you know. We'll, we'll put five years extra on all their lives by just being able to go out and, you know, follow harness racing. What's that worth? A lot.
They're not going to call you the Messiah, are they? No, I don't think they'd be calling me the Messiah, but that would probably help, help the health system a lot. <laughs> well, it is a good area to be. The gum trees down there, you're known here as Bushy Lodge, but I mean down there as well, the gum trees, it's a beautiful setting, like even when it's even when it's really hot, and it can get really hot, we won't hide from that in Charlton, but um, the gum trees down there definitely make it such a nice, cool setting. Oh, it's beautiful. And, you know, you pull up in the float car park under the river red gums and it's um, down out of the breeze. It's it's No, it's a beautiful setting. It really is. It's 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 um, majestic. July 4 meeting just gone. I've got one for Andrea Gorman too. We need a hot dog eating contest next year. A bloke ate 63 hot dogs in 10 minutes. So I think we need to have one of those maybe next year at the club. But um, you're embracing... Yeah, one bloke that might be all right. You're, you're embracing the... Um, you're the trainer em- over there, Shane Sands. I reckon he can eat a bit. He's pretty good. He says he's got to go on those man shakes every so often. He, he, I reckon he can eat a hot dog. Good shelf. But you're embracing that. The Omen better the day the other day. Yankee Lover went in the first. I, I, no, July 4, it was the Omen better the day. I wonder how many people actually thought of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Actually, I had a bit of luck last year. I, I had CC in America the same day. Yeah, so you want to you want to follow that next year on July 4th. If you've got an American named Dawson, you haven't won for a while, take it, take it to that meeting as well. Some big key clubs, uh, key meetings coming up, though, for the club. And right through to your, to yep. your March um, with your cup. Yep. It's starting, really starting to ramp up this time of year. Yeah, no, we've got the, um, the bonus meeting next month in August. Um, then we've got our members' uh, Christmas party at December 2 meeting, which is a Friday, which is brilliant for us. Um, and we're hoping to get that later, you know, as later finish as we can get as many as we can there. It is harvest time here, but we're um, hoping for a shower of rain maybe the day before so they can all knock off and be there. Um, but, yeah, we'll plan on that. So last year we had a hell of a day um, at our Christmas club. It was actually at the Vale of Avoca, which is one of our sponsors, and we had, a, well, I think we had 130, 150 turn up there, which is a good number, you know, just for your club Christmas party. And then, um, so we'll hope to do the same at a racetrack and, you know, we'll have a bit of betting around it and... Um, yeah, you know, just have a day out. It'd be good. Um, membership going to throw you under the bus. I hope you know the answer to this, but I know it's not a lot. You're meant to have turned that off. Surely we would have had this one. We would have had this interview finished half an hour ago. Well, that's interview. <laughs> That'd be yeah, yeah. But your membership. Do you want to know anything about membership? <laughs> no, membership. How much does it actually um, it cost? Because it's not a lot. No, it's twenty dollars for one year or fifty for three. And uh, look, with that, we're generous. If you happen to die in those three years, we give you back the balance to your estate. <laughs> That's just as random as, as oh, Kevin, I wasn't sure where that one yeah, was. You want, to be, you want to be able to give it back. That's fairly important. Uh, but that means that you're invited to these Christmas parties. And I know um, through seeing Kieran Isles last year on social media, and I'm great mates with Kieran, I can give a little bit of cheek. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's I said in the other interview when we had a bit of a go before, that's why they've uh, redone the lawn in the back uh, Yard there at the Vale of Avocas, he is trouble. He's having trouble getting stable on it. So they've they've definitely got a dead flat level. So if he comes back and stays there, it'll be right. He'll be able to walk out there next time. And anyway, I'm wondering that's not the drink. That's just Kieran the way he walks, isn't it? <laughs> of, of course, <laughs> it is indeed. Your cup in March. Um, I love the fact that you guys have basically give yourself a mood, if you like, or you've set set the tone with the punters club. That it was a 10, 12 punters. Yeah. Ten, 10 people punt off, they have a big competition, um, it's great, we need the punt in the industry, we need turnover, so I think it's, for mine, it's a bit of an ingenious idea. Yeah, and we embrace the punt, as, uh, as it's still legal, having a beer is still legal, having fun is still legal, so while it's still legal, we'll be, uh, we'll be embracing that, uh, we won't shy away, we'll not say it's the only thing we are, but we definitely don't shy away from it, um, the, the punters love it, the punters that actually come up and participate love it, and... Um, it helps our turnover. They have a good day out. Um, no, it's it's great. It's a full-on day. I am going to throw you under the brush because there's a bit of a ladies' do late morning, isn't there? Like a morning tea or something. I can't remember. Andrea will tell me off because yes. I do know what it is, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's the teal. So we have the yeah and um, bubbles in the bush, and uh, they get there about eleven, and that that goes then, and uh, we have a little auction there, and we raise. I think Andrea said the other day we might have uh, since she's been started. I think she's raised twenty five thousand at that that for um, the teal, so which has been great, you know. And that leads into the races, you know, rather than just turn up and not much is happening. It's it's bouncing by midday, and uh, then we go on from there. Yeah, you know, it's a, it is a lot of fun, and that's what I said. You cater for everyone. The kids are always catered for too, yeah. and it doesn't matter about the weather. But in March, Charlton weather is sensational. Um, it is really really good, Joey. 
Thank you. Anyone wants to get involved or ask about the training centre and the likes, I mean, at the minute you say you're full, but I would imagine the way you guys think that doesn't mean no. No, it doesn't mean no. And look, we're... Look, if they're, if they're interested, ring us, and, we're, and we've, we've got things in place. We have taken a little bit of step the uh, foot off the gas just for the minute. We've done a fair bit in a fairly quick time. Um, but we're, we're building the energy and we'll, um, we'll go again, I think. Oh, well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you for the take two, too. I think the second one was better than the first, don't you? Oh, oh, I wouldn't rate either that well, but anyway, that's whatever you reckon. Thank you very much, Joe Thompson. <laughs> Thank you.